Praise the Lord in the highest goodwill towards men. Father God, we just want to thank you for helping us to embark on a brand new week. We thank you, dear God, for food, raiment, and shelter. Thank you for all that you have done and what you'll continue to do for us. You are a great God, and there is none like you. Father, even when it looked dim and grim, you always come through for us. And all I can say is praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, be with these people like how it's an election here. We ask, dear God, that you may help that everything will go smoothly, dear Father. And you set up kings and you tear kings down. So just do what you see fit for your children. Praise ye the Lord. Be with uh, Kenya also. Lord, I'm not sure if they finished with the teacher's strike, but uh, Sister Lynette is on. So it's possible that they still have the strike going. So we are praying that they will come to in an agreement their father and give the teachers what they need so that they can teach the students and that people like Sister Lynette can get paid because she's a contract teacher. Lord, work it out for us, dear God, and them. Be with uh, Sister Judy in a special way. Continue to bless and keep her. Cover her with your blood and anoint her. Be with our children, dear Father, in a special way, grandchildren, great-grandchild, Lord God, and also be with Belinda, Linda, Carolyn, Antonio, be with Barbara, be with Richard, be with Anne, the Berean Village, the West End Church, be with Sister Pearlie also, just continue to bless and keep, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, be with Sister Cynthia, in a special way, continue to be with her husband, be with her children, her grandchild, her mother. Just continue to bless the entire family. Be with Sister Brown, dear Father. Lord, as she moves around town down there in Jamaica, we ask, dear God, that you may put an edge of protection around her. Be with the Bradshaw family, the Bedford family. Be with Shireen and her family, dear Father. Just continue to cover them with your blood in the name of Jesus. Father, be with uh, Sister Lynette in a special way. Continue to cover her with your blood and just continue to provide for her, Lord. I know it could be difficult, but Lord, with you in the vessel, she can smile at many, many storms. Lord, uh, continue, dear God, to be with uh, Joshua in a special way also. Cover him with your, your blood, dear Father. Lord, just continue to be with his parents, be with his wife and his children. Dear God, just bless them. Be with the children that Sister Lynette has. I'm praying also for her matron, dear God. Lord, thank you for just working things out for her. Be with Dismas and uh, the children, the matrons, their father, the soldier that patrols the compound. Just continue to bless them and keep them and cover them with your blood and anoint them, dear father. Lord, just continue to be with all those that you have placed in my life. Lord, just remember them and keep them. Be with Frida. In a special way, continue to provide for her. Help that she will sell a lot of stuff today at the market. Dear Father, just bless her and keep her. Remember Kemunto, uh, Millicent. Lord God, just continue to be with Brian. Be with all the people. Calvin, dear Father, and all those who we have been praying for. Just bless them and keep them. Lord God, be with... Uh, Sister Raglan, be with Sister Nadine, Lord God, be with Sister Bogle, Sister Margaret, just continue to bless them and keep them. You know their prayer requests, dear Father, we ask that you may go and attend to those prayer requests. 
And whatever they need, we ask that you may provide it for them. Lord, we thank you for all the assistance that we get, dear Father. Lord, to do whatever you need us to do. Be with the, with the Grant family, my beautiful, sweet wife, and uh, my children. Just bless them all. Be with Tatia, Tiana, who just left out just now. Be with her. Be with the car that she's driving, dear Father. It's not a brand new car, but Lord, just keep it going in the name of Jesus. Father, as she goes and, and uh, just do Uber, dear God. Lord, we ask that you may bless, bless, bless. We give you praise, honor, and glory for all you have done and what you'll continue to do. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. Alrighty now. Just finished reading from Hebrews chapter 3, and we started at verse 1, and I will be picking up at verse 11, and I will be finishing it. Okay, it says, So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil art of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, whilst it is said, Today, if ye will hear my voice, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation for some, when they had heard, did provoke, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was 
he grieved forty years. Was it not with them that had sin, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear ye that they should not enter into Israel? But to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. It's, it's just important that we pay attention to what was read because it, it sounds a little bit cliche, but the bottom line in us going to where Christ is, is to believe, is to believe that he, what he said is what he will do. Yes. We have to make sure that we find ourselves in a position where we are not just going around not realizing who Christ is to us. And this morning's reading mentioned about a set of people. And anyone knows what set of people the reading this morning mentioned? All right, it was the Israelites. And how long were they in the wilderness? 40 years. 40 years. And did many of them fell in the wilderness? Yes, a lot. All right. Yes. None, none except for Joshua and Caleb, none of the elders entered into the promised land. Because of their unbelief. You see, so it's the same thing with us. If we don't believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, were we there when he died on the cross? No, we wasn't. No, we were not. By faith we believe. By faith we believe. Thank you, Sister Judy. By faith we believe that what he said he did, he did. And what he's going to do, he made a promise that he will be coming back to receive us. Well, it seems as if it's taking a very long time. But God's time is not our time. And we need to make sure we understand that. A thousand years is but a day in his sight. And if the world is 6,000 plus years, that means it's just six days to him. And now we are in the seventh day. All right? So let us be patient. That was the problem with the Israelites. When they were traveling in the wilderness, they were lock patience. And because they were lock patience, it says all of them fell in the wilderness because they had unbelief going for them. And uh, it is said here, it says, and to whom swear ye that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So if you don't want to Enter into God's rest. Just don't believe in him. And he said that the other part here in verse 15. It says, whilst it is said, today, if he will hear his voice, order not your hearts as in the provocation. So, Many people are not going to make it to heaven to see Christ because just 
like Pharaoh, their hearts were hardened, or their hearts are hardened. You understand? But we ought to allow God to be able to work with us. Because if we push Christ out of our lives, we will suffer. I, I can't even say no way better than that. We I just have to be straightforward and blunt and let you know the consequences of not accepting Christ and doing what he asks us to do. There is a reward for every man. But you can choose what your reward is. By faith, you can choose what your reward is. And it says that he punish our forefathers. And a lot of times, many people will look at Christ as if he is a dictator or if he is a person who have no mercy because so many people did so many things and they were punished for it. But for all of us who have children, okay, whenever our children do something, do we just look at them and just say, oh, he's just a child. She's just a child. Or do you at least talk to them and let them know that that's not the right thing to do? If we do not do that, those children will go up, grow up, grow up, and be a mess. And Christ cannot allow that to happen to us unless we choose because that is the greatest thing that God gives us and it's the power of choice yes, but sometimes unfortunately and I said unfortunately again we choose to do the wrong thing and when we choose to disobey like how the Israelites disobeyed, they were punished. punished yes. And, you know, you, you go back and read Numbers. And when you read Numbers, you, you, you will see all kind of punishments that they went through. It, there, were, there were snakes that bit them because of their disobedience. And a brazen snake had to be built. And even when they disobeyed, if they wanted to be healed, they had to have enough faith to walk from where they live to go and look at that snake in the wilderness. The wilderness experience for them, which... I was studying something and they say it should have taken them three to four days right. to cover that journey. But because of their disobedience, it took them 40 years. And I'm looking at even our travel towards where God gone to prepare for us. Maybe, and I don't know, but maybe he would have come already. But we are distracted doing our own thing. And we have to pray that God will help us to do what he wants us to do. Because a lot of times what happens is that we get distracted. The Israelites, they were distracted by the nations around them. They were distracted by not having water. 
uh, they were distracted by so many things. After Christ had brought them through the Red Sea, destroyed Pharaoh's army, they got distracted. And there will be time that Christ will do great things for us. But it's a strong possibility that if we don't stay focused and keep on looking in the face of Jesus, we can get distracted. And if we are, the consequences might not be what we want it to be. All right? Who should be over our houses? Christ. Christ should be over our houses. You know, we our bodies are the temple of God. And we have to allow Christ to be the one who take care and rule our bodies. Because the devil will get us into big mess. So we ought to allow Christ to take a hold of our bodies. It is very, very important. Okay? Not only our bodies, but also our houses. Let us not grieve Christ, but let us do the things that he asked us to do. It is very, very important. I want to ask this question. Is Christ always talking to us to try to get us to do what he wants us to do that will give us eternal life? And the answer is yes. He's always doing that. But sometimes we are so busy doing everything else. And because we are doing that, we ended up in trouble. So I am going to just ask us to make sure that we pray and ask God to help us, to help us to do what he wants us to do so that we do not end up like the Israelites, they, 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 I mean, they gave Moses trouble. Yes, they, they complained so much about everything. They even tried to usurp Moses' authority. And Christ have to allow Korah Korah and his army to be swallowed up into the earth. Crazy things. And somebody may look at it and say, Christ is wicked. No, he's not. But he wants us to be obedient to his word. Let us pray this morning that in spite of what comes our way, we will be obedient to God's word. It says that it is better to obey than to what? To sacrifice. to sacrifice. Yes, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. So let us be obedient to his word. I'm going to tell you, it's not easy to do that. We need Christ in our lives. If we do not have Christ in our lives, I can tell you right now, as far as it comes to be obedient to him, it's going to be a, a very difficult, uphill battle. Okay? But when we have Christ in our lives, when we allow him to take charge of our lives, then it becomes much easier to do what Christ wants us to do. I do hope this study this morning has helped somebody
to make the decision that instead of me being disobedient, I will do my best with the help of the Most High yes. to be obedient to Him and to do His will. And what is God's will? Uh, preach the gospel to everyone. Praise the Lord for us to preach the gospel to everyone. That is God's will. Praise ye the Lord. Let us go out and yeah. do just that. Thank you. Shelter in the time of storm. Shelter in the time of storm. Right here in the weary Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Our Father and our Lord who art in heaven, Father, we come before your presence this morning as a family. Lord, we pray, Father, as a group, that the oh, yeah. Lord, you may be with us, guide us, direct us, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your faithful unto our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your word that we have shared from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3. Lord, Hallelujah. Lord, when we become obedient, you will bless us with many blessings. And when we become disobedient, O oh Lord, you will punish us just like have this. Have mercy. This is a long journey. Father Lord, now we pray that you may help us, you may guide us, you may direct us, so that, Lord, we may be obedient unto you, Lord. Yes. I pray for our brothers and sisters from here in Africa. I pray for Joshua. I pray for Patricia. I pray for my brother Sanchez. Yes. That the good Lord, you may have been with us, bless us, and meet the desires of our hearts, O Lord. I also pray for my brothers and sisters from abroad, Lord. Hear them when they cry unto you. Provide for them, Lord, the desires of their hearts according to your will. Oh, Lord. hallelujah. Now may your mercy guide us. May your spirit dwell with us. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray and believe. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us believe and pray. Mm -hmm. Father, we come unto you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to reach to this day, O oh Lord. Thank you for this precious moment that you have allowed us to reach this day, O oh Lord. What we have learned today, O oh Lord, as, as we continue to be blessed with our colleagues, Lord, be with us. I pray and trust in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Psalms 19.14 All right, we serve a good God. He's a shelter 
in the time of storm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.